Hey there, students. It is currently April 17th. The AP European History exam is on May 14th. So what I'm going to start doing is taking questions. Every once in a while, somebody emails me. You can email me, tr at tomritchie.net. Okay, go ahead, send an email if you have a question about the exam. And I'm going to try to post daily videos or almost daily videos answering your questions. Okay, so this one goes out to David Walker who emailed me and he asks, Hi Mr. Ritchie, I appreciate your videos on AP European History. Good. I am wondering how much I need to know about art in European history. Is art an important component on the AP test? That's easy. Yes, okay, that's, that's a good one-word answer. How in-depth should I know the art? Should I just pay attention to overall style and movements and how they correspond with a time period rather than individual works of art? Thanks, David. Okay, so first of all, David hits it right on the head. We do need to know the scope of the time periods. We need to understand the key characteristics of Renaissance art, of the Baroque, of Romanticism and that sort of thing. So definitely need to know about that. So Renaissance art, you've got the classical themes, you've got the bright colors, the symmetry and balance and perspective. Uh, you know, anything you see typically Greek, Roman, Biblical, that sort of classicism in Renaissance art. The Baroque, of course, very gaudy and such. And then Romantic art, which is mostly about nature course there's more to romantic art than that but for the AP European history exam the nature aspect is very important so you need to understand that how something typifies the art movement okay so that is very important so understand all of the key art movements I've already made videos about Renaissance art and romantic art which you are more than welcome to check out either one of those by clicking there if you want a little review. Now, to what extent do you need to know specific works of art? It's not necessarily a, okay, what work of art is this? A, B, C, D, E, or something like that. But there may be questions where you have to, for example, an FRQ could ask you, about a certain art movement and it could ask you to give two or three examples. So for each art movement you should definitely look at some things about it that typify that style. For example, if I think about Renaissance art, I might think about Raphael's The School of Athens, which as you can see it has Plato and Aristotle in the middle there, so you see these classical themes. You see Socrates a little bit away corrupting the youth and all of that good stuff. Now also, Raphael's The School of Athens is very bright. You see perspective. You see balance. So it's got all of those characteristics, the bright, vivid colors, perspective, balance, and classical themes. So all of that is present there. Now, when you go to Romanticism, for example, think about Friedrich's Wander Above the Sea of Fog. As you can see in that painting, you see where you've got the wanderer there. Of course, he's turned away from you because the emphasis is not supposed to be on him. The emphasis is supposed to be on nature that is being contemplated. So that's how you would look at romantic art about nature and emotions and the values of romanticism. Now, keep in mind, you could also be asked about architecture or sculpture. Keep in mind, Renaissance art architecture was also imitating Greco-Roman architecture, was also very symmetrical and balanced, columns, domes, that sort of thing. Also sculptures. Think about Michelangelo's David and how Michelangelo's David imitates Greco-Roman sculpture and glorifies the human body and all of that stuff. Okay, so you see humanism in there as well. So just a very brief sort of thing. Yes, know your major art movements. I would say the two most important uh, being the Renaissance classical art and the Romantic art, but there are several other art movements as well. So know all of that. Know two or three works of art for each of those art movements that if you were called upon to give an example and explain why that is typical of the art period, then do that, okay? So it's a little bit of both, but the emphasis is definitely on understanding each art movement. 
So that's the question of the day. AP European History Art. If you have any other questions for me, go ahead and email me, send me the, the question, and I will get around to answering it. Like I said, I want to try to do this every day before the exam. Also going to try to do some Google Hangout stuff like that. Art today, we'll do something else tomorrow. Until next time.